All right, we're back. It's episode number four, right? Is this episode number four? Yeah, you got me for a second. Four, yep. episode quattro of the Things We Dread podcast. I'm the B-Man, alongside... Bombshell. And we're back. A day early. A day early. Normally, we're on, on Wednesdays, we do the recordings. This week, we decided to do it another day. Mix it up a little bit. Mix it up a little bit. I had some stuff going on this week, and uh, change it up a little bit. Good. Nothing wrong with that. Good. Throw us off our game. So how was your week? It was pretty good. It was... Uh, or two weeks since the last weeks. podcast. Yeah. It was It was pretty good. It went by... Like I said, it goes by fast. Yeah. Yeah. And I just saw you the other day, so... Mm -hmm. I haven't even really had time to miss you. No. No. But I am That's glad sad. we're doing it a day earlier, though. I'm glad as well. So... I almost got killed on the way home today. That's a lie. No, I almost got killed. <laughs> I almost got killed. By a person or by yourself? I was driving on the Palisades Parkway. Oh, it's a Jesus. highway. They have these merge areas that you have to merge on, mm -hmm. but there's very little room to do it. It was rush hour. Right. And I go to merge on going northbound, and this big like pickup truck thing will not let me in. I'm running out of room. I have to keep going. It's not a place where you could stop. You have to mm -hmm. keep going and you yield in. Yeah. This guy wouldn't let me in. This is one of my pet peeves about people when they're driving that they just don't let you in yeah where are you gonna go how do you win this how oh, i'll win it <laughs> <laughs> there's no doubt about that i mean how does it benefit you really how does it benefit you as a driver on the road to not let somebody get in isn't this what causes most traffic jams it's like a penis measuring game exactly so I'm trying to get in, and this guy's not letting me in. And I, I was on the phone talking to somebody. Of course. And it was, I was on my hands free, though. Oh, not I, like me. No. So I was on the phone talking to somebody. This guy won't let me in, so I start beeping at him. I'm like, let me in. <laughs> and then he like looks forward like he's ignoring me, which this guy's not ignoring me. I'm Dude. beeping at him. <laughs> so then I start giving him the finger. Oh, right? that's effective. <laughs> You're number one. So I'm beeping at him, giving him the finger. And he still won't let me in. I can't believe so it. So now I'm running out of room, and he actually runs me off the road. <laughs> like, he will not let me in. So then I quickly get back on the road and catch up to this guy, just so I can continue <laughs> beeping at him and giving him the finger for five miles. He took notice. <laughs> what did he do? Did he give you the, the shoulder shrug and go, oh, sorry. Oh, no, like, no, no. He was trying to ignore it. me like he wasn't seeing me, but this guy was seeing me. I know somebody that once took a, you know, everybody has like a cup of change in their car yep. or whatever. I know somebody that had like a coffee cup of just change. And he threw it? He threw it, opened his sunroof, and threw it up it, out of the sunroof. I know he, bikers do that. They keep like rolls of quarters sometimes. <laughs> Roll of quarters, <laughs> holy shit. So I get home, <laughs> and I'm eating dinner, and my wife, <laughs> my wife asked me. <laughs> <laughs> My wife asks me, am I in a better mood today? Because I was in a bad mood yesterday. So I go, no, not really. <laughs> and she goes, and I had already told her this story. She goes, but you got to finger a guy all the way home. <laughs> and I that, was like. That always <laughs> makes me feel great. And I was like, what? She goes, yeah, you got to finger a guy all the way home. <laughs> and I'm like, you mean give someone the finger? She goes, no, you got to finger a guy all the way home. I'm like, you, I think you're using the wrong terminology here. So I fingered a guy all the way home, apparently. Lucky you. According to my wife, that should have put me in a better mood. It, it puts me in a better mood every time. <laughs> I was picturing somebody whipping a roll of quarters at somebody. While driving. That's why I went into my little fit. Because that seems <laughs> so awesome. Do you like I'd take be... them out of the roll and throw it or just throw the whole I roll? I imagine the whole roll going. And then it cost you 10 bucks to hit. <laughs> it's hit $10 somebody. a hit? Yeah. I'm going to go with pennies. That's an expensive assault. It cost you $10. I never thought of it that way. Yeah. It actually does cost you $10 per blow. <laughs> yeah. 
It's like a cheap hooker. <laughs> you beat me to it because I was laughing. <laughs> <sighs> so, so I have I have a, a little list that I kept this week. Oh, you actually kept the list and prepared this time? Yeah, on a clipboard, everything. Hmm. Like it's my job. So what irritated you this week? <clears throat> well, this this stuff irritates me generally in life. I think I told you earlier that three months from this date is Christmas Eve. Indeed it is. It is. Ninety days. Um it aggravates me every year when people choose to go Christmas shopping on Christmas Eve or Black Friday. You know what Black Friday is? Yes, I do. When people choose, you make the choice to go shopping on one of those two days and then bitch about the lines and the crowds and the I don't understand why everybody goes shopping on Black Friday. I don't I don't do it honestly, I don't do it often. I've done it a couple the of times. The sales aren't even that good. No, there's like one not. Th- there's like one one thing that's cheap. Yeah, and, then and I, there's don't, nothing. I don't really buy, I don't buy stuff like that as Christmas gifts for people, but. What do you buy? Uh, more like personal stuff. Like, I'm not going to go buy somebody an iPod or a fucking TV. That's no. psychotic. That's, that's actually, I just lied to you. I bought my son an iPod for Christmas. So you do. For my kid. Yeah. And I mean, I, it's not like i I wait for Black Friday to save 12 bucks on an iPod. That's retarded. It is. But Christmas Eve, I do like to go out. Um, my Christmas shopping is usually completely done by Thanksgiving. Why are you making that face right now? No, nothing. My Christmas shopping is usually <laughs> done by like Thanksgiving. You, you were having microphone problems as usual. <laughs> Bombshell does not know how to use a microphone. That's my thing to dread. Listen. I keep telling her talk into the microphone, and then she turns her head, talks the other way, drinks her coffee, looks up, looks down. I'm She's an animated everywhere. object. <laughs> You're not good at talking into a microphone. <laughs> no, I'm not good at sitting still. You can't expect me to sit. And now I have, as the punishment, this thing is an inch and a half in front of my mouth. I'm going to take a picture of this so people <laughs> on the Facebook page can see what she's complaining no, about. No, let me fix my hair. <laughs> okay, go ahead. I got you. Mm. We'll put that up later, her complaint about uh, where the microphone is. Listen, microphones are meant to be talked into. It's outrageous. You have to. I'm gonna. People complained last week that you were too low, but it's because you weren't using a microphone properly. I never in my life have I had somebody complain that they couldn't hear my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first time for everything. <laughs> ever, ever. So we're, yeah, that pisses me off when people bitch about. I gotta. I'm gonna show you the distance. I'm gonna exaggerate a little bit. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's the distance. <laughs> You can't talk across the room from a microphone. You have to talk into it. That's what they are meant for. That pisses me off. You don't have any opinions on that? On Black Friday? Any thoughts on people that go out and do something? like? I think it's ridiculous. You can't go to Disney and bitch because there's so many people there. You're in Disney, douche. Uh I do that. You do that. Of course you do. Listen, there needs to be a way... That when you go certain places, you don't have to deal with people. I agree with that. I'll pay double to not deal with anybody. You know what? I would pay extra to be on an airplane with people that are just not allowed to talk. Oh, I've had some airplane issues. I got into an airplane once, and I literally got into an argument with a guy over the armrest. Mm -hmm. I forget what it was. I was sitting in the aisle seat, possibly. And my arm was touching the middle armrest because, I mean, the seats are like 12 inches wide. Right. And the guy that was sitting in the middle seat was a complete douche. Mm -hmm. And he pushed my arm (gasps) off the armrest. So, like a mature guy. Did you tell him you were an MMA fighter? I pushed his arm off the armrest. (laughs) (laughs) And me and him got into a pushing match back and forth on the armrest. (laughs) And then he said, hey, he's like, don't you know the rule? No. I don't know the rule. I don't either. Apparently, he says that in the rule book, which I asked him to show me, <laughs> he gets that armrest because he's sitting in the middle. What does that mean? So what, where is the armrest? Because he says that since I'm on the edge, I have an armrest. Okay. The person that's against the window has an armrest. The two in the middle are his. Oh, that makes perfect sense. 
And he actually told me that it's in the rules. And I said, show me the rules. Did he? No. Guys he couldn't show asshole. me the rules. Mm -hmm. But it was a very uncomfortable ride, mostly for him, because I don't care. Yeah. But we were not friendly on that ride at all. There was another... <laughs> there, was no, there was no friendships formed there. <laughs> no. I went on another airplane quite a while ago, and we were going, I think it was to Vegas. <laughs> and I was sitting in the aisle seat. My wife was sitting in the middle seat. Lucky there was her. another... She always sits in the middle because I always sit in the aisle. So on the edge... That's a guy thing. I like the aisle seat. Definitely I need extra thing. room for my legs. I have very long legs. I think it's because if something happens, you guys want to get out of Dodge. <laughs> and you don't give a shit who you leave behind. That might be true. <laughs> Keep my bags and my wife. <laughs> so, so I'm sitting there. My wife's sitting in the middle. And then this other guy is sitting on the end. And he's watching a movie. Right? And this guy is having such a reaction to the movie. It was startling to both me and my wife. Like, he was watching, like, some kind of Armageddon movie where, like, planes were crashing and things. And this guy, he's just like, ah! Ah! He's Right? Is that my, my wife is actually sitting here. This guy was having, he was, like, he was sweating. And he, he was screaming. And he was just, he was having a reaction to this movie. And me and my wife were, try, were looking at each other laughing. Try not to look at the guy and laugh right at him. It was it was definitely uh, an entertaining ride. Like I would rather him though than the guy with the armrest problem. Yeah, fuck that guy. I've never had many uh, many issues personally. I, I can't even get through airports easily. When I go through the airport, it's a whole production. Why? I don't know. I look to me like an upstanding citizen. Me too. A fine citizen. And then I try to go through the TSA. They hate me. I go through, and it's typically, uh, we have to go through your entire bag. We're going to need to check your hair. They check your hair? Yep, for bombs or something. They Heaven. check my hair. They wipe papers <laughs> on my hair. They put it through a machine. No, they don't. They're like, oh, you haven't cleaned your hair in a week. I don't know what they're checking for, but they check my hair. How do they check it? Do they use like like pens or little sticks? Yep. That is And then they usually take a paper and they rub it on my head. No, isn't I thought you were lying about that. Oh no, totally true. And it's funny because like I'll go through for business, so I'm with like other business people and like they <laughs> have to wait for them <laughs> to check my head. Check my head. Hold on, I gotta get my head checked. <laughs> That's absurd. Absolutely. I'm being profiled. I'm Absolutely. not a terrorist. No, but you do look like a Jamaican, some a sort Jamaican. of Rastafari. I'm a little pale for drug a Jamaican. Dealing, muling. People <laughs> always think I'm a drug dealer wherever I go. Like if I go to Vegas, people are trying to buy pot from me. Really? Yeah. You should just bring like catnip or oregano with you and just sell it. <laughs> I was I was sitting in uh like an In and Out Burger in Vegas. I go mm -hmm. to Vegas a lot. I'm sitting in an In and Out strip Burger. Clubs. No. What do you mean strip clubs? In Vegas. There's strip clubs there. I know. So, <laughs> so I was sitting in an in and out <laughs> burger, and I forget what the guy said to me, but he's like, "You got trees? Like every yeah. everywhere I go, they're trying to buy weed from me." You got trees? <laughs> I think that there must be like a kingpin drug dealer in Vegas that looks, that looks like, like me. Yeah, because I go there, I'll be standing outside a casino, people are coming up to me trying to buy drugs. <laughs> really? Yeah. Just bring some aspirin, baby aspirin, some catnip, make a mint. Come home. <laughs> I don't want to do that because I'll be able to eat, sell it too easily and then I'm going to get hooked into the lifestyle. It's going to be like Breaking <laughs> it's Bad. A, it's a slippery slope. Yep. Yeah. So I I was listening to, uh, I don't know, I was listening to a radio station. It was, I don't know what it was, 92.3 something mm -hmm. FM. And people were calling in requesting songs. Mm-hmm. Who the hell calls into a radio station and requests a song? Why don't you just put the song on? <laughs> I never thought of that. It seems very but counterproductive. They used to, uh... So I'm um, hold on. The thought process. I really want to hear blurred lines or whatever song it is. Right. So let me figure out what the radio station's phone number is. Then let me call them. Mm -hmm. Wait. Maybe an hour. They pick me up and they go, oh, I'd like to hear Blurred Lines. Wouldn't it be a better use of your time to just put on Blurred Lines? Yeah. 
D- didn't you do that as a kid? Call up a radio station? Yeah. Number one, no. Number two, when I was a kid, it wasn't quite so easy to get music as it right. is now. You, there is not a song you can't find within 10 seconds online. Yeah. Yeah, no, when I was a kid, we used to call, uh, I think it was K104 for, uh, to request songs. And then you sit there with your radio with your cassette tape in it that uh, you've already popped the tabs out of, but you're recording over it, so you have to put scotch tape over the ends of the tabs. Do you know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, so you can record onto yeah. it again. And then you record songs off the radio. Right. Did I mean, then that? it makes sense. I, I didn't do that. Right. But... I mean, that was also, you know. Is a coon's age a racist phrase? A <laughs> <laughs> coon's age? Yeah. I've, first of all, never heard that term, and I would say yes. <laughs> what would a coon's age be? I don't know, but my mom uses that phrase. <laughs> <laughs> she might be a racist. Oh, she most definitely may be a little bit of a racist. But I always thought it was like, a really, really long time. But my daughter, who is nine, said the phrase cotton picking, like this cotton picking fence, because my fence wasn't closing. Instead right, of like cursing? Last... Right. But she said this cotton picking fence. And then I was like, I'm pretty sure. Does she live in like Tom Sawyer times? My mom says it. She hears my mom say it. Does your mom send her out to like paint white picket fences or something? <laughs> She sends her out to whip slaves. Go out, little Sawyer. <laughs> <laughs> to, to whip slaves. <laughs> my mom. My mom is like old, right? Mm-hmm. And she's old Irish. So That's like just, older than old? It's like she's just born a racist. Right. And uh, so she uses things, uses terms like cotton picking and a coon's age and you know, God knows what else a woman says. I'm going to compile a list of these. Okay. And uh, she doesn't realize that it's completely racist. Like, she still refers to black people like, ask that colored kid. Mom, you really can't call our waiter a colored kid. The truth is, though, you never know what to say. No, you don't. It's like, it, it, we're so confused nowadays what to say. Like, you don't know. Like, I said, I, I was trying to be politically correct. To somebody, and I, I referred to somebody as an African American. You can't say that now. They said, "I'm not from Africa." Oh. What do you want me to call you? Yeah, I, I'm trying to be nice. I'm trying yeah. to be politically correct. Is black what you say now? I do. It's just a black guy. Yeah, not an African American gentleman. No, because they're probably not from Africa. No, they're not. It is a ridiculous term. It is. Yeah, but you call you call Mexicans Mexicans, and they're not from Mexico. They're not. No, I mean not. No, like. Then how'd they become a Mexican? Their parents were Mexican. Ah, oh, same thing as being from Mexico. So African Americans, their I'm, parents weren't from Africa. I'm gonna research this. Me- Mexicans, even if their parents weren't, their pa- somebody was from Mexico. You're probably right. Mexican is a nationality. African American is an ethnicity. Whoa. Did I get that right? I think you did. I think we're onto something here. We might be. We might be changing the world. (laughs) (laughs) I know there's going to be like a million people now that go, that's not an ethnicity. That's not a nationality. Right now, there's at least three quarters of a million people going, these two are fucking idiots. (laughs) Probably. And racist. (laughs) And the one over there sitting there is laughing at us. We have an audience tonight watching us. uh, We have somebody laughing at us at least. But my mom does use, she uses a lot of phrases and terms that are definitely racist. And she has no... Even if she knows now, she doesn't care. She doesn't. It just is what it is. No, it is what it is. She doesn't care. Remember I was talking last week about the uh, bathroom attendants? Yes. And how I hate them? Yes. Because I can use the sink, the sink myself? Yeah. I'm not sure what's worse. Bathroom attendants or automated sinks slash automated soap dispensers. Mm-hmm. I can never get those darn things to work. No, and I argue with them. Like, I... I'll go and I'll put my hands underneath. It doesn't go on. I start going in a circle. It doesn't go on. I somehow pull away. It goes on. 
I put back in, won't go on. It's a whole, and then uh, then I'll put it in, and then it'll go on, and then it'll <laughs> shut off too quickly. <laughs> Can we? We don't know how to use knobs anymore. We can't use a knob. <laughs> I could just put the sink on. It's people's germaphobe. People have our complete germaphobe. All right, they don't one of two things has to happen: put the freaking knobs back on the sinks, or get sensors that work. Mm-hmm. And then half the time, when I get when it's the automated soap dispenser, forget about it. First of all, they give you like. Like one semen shot's worth. It's like, <laughs> then you can't get it to come back out again. It's like, nope, only one semen shot's worth for five minutes. It makes washing your hands very difficult. And that's not something that you should really make more difficult for people. <laughs> do you always wash your hands when you go to the bathroom? Yeah. You do? Yeah. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? I don't know. I just don't. Like, I know what I just touched. And uh, nothing, like, there was no breaking through the toilet paper. <laughs> there was no accidental accidental insertion of anything. <laughs> so, so is this for both a number one and a number two? Oh, I would never number two in a public place. But that wasn't the question. The question is, do you wash your hands afterwards? Even if there was no break of the toilet paper. Oh. Uh. Because if the answer is no, I'm sending my wife out to go get antibacterial. <laughs> um, do I wash? Yeah, I think I do wash my hands when I. <laughs> she thinks. When I. She thinks she washes her hands. Listen, I only number two, maybe three times a week. <laughs> <laughs> does, does that mean you do wash your hands or you don't? I do, but that's why I had to think about it. Because it's not like something I do every day. That's unusual. Is it? I think you're supposed to go every day. Well, I would love to, but I don't. (laughs) And if I'm not home, forget it. I'll wait until I'm fully toxic and almost... So you never have an incident where it's like, I just got to go. Now. You're out and about. Just got to go now. No. Never. No. I would get completely sick. Break out in a sweat, a, probably a fever, hallucinate. A poop sweat? Yeah. A, a loose, what are you hallucinating <laughs> about? Doo doo sweat. <laughs> <laughs> but I can't. It, no. I went to Aruba. I think I told you this. I yeah. went to Aruba. It was like by the fifth day, I looked like I was pregnant. I had a doo doo baby. I couldn't go. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, oh. it's the best kind of baby. <laughs> Easy to take care of. Flush it right down the toilet. <laughs> you just flush it when you're done. So you do wash your hands when you poop. You don't yeah, wash your I hands when you pee. pee. Well, I first of all, I never pee in public. So that's why I'm like never. the automated sink things aren't like. So you don't even know what I'm talking about. Never. Bathroom attendants. No, and I have sinks. I have used them because if I go into some place that's like grimy as hell, or if I accidentally, you know the the latches. When you go in a stall that you have to touch with yeah. your hands, then I wash. You my don't hands. have to touch it. But if I don't touch anything with my hands, like I'm an elbower and a wrister, and I'll like not actually touch anything, mm-hmm. then I'm like, you're still gonna have dirty wrists. Fuck it, I don't. I don't eat or touch anything with my wrist. I never flush the toilet with my hand. Always with your foot. Yeah. Even when you're home. No, I don't. I flush it with my hand. No, I, I'll never touch. I try to not touch anything. So I wonder if everybody flushes the toilet with their foot when they're out. No, people are disgusting. Because if that's the case, why don't they just have foot flushers? You're a genius. I know. <laughs> <laughs> that would be really smart. Yeah, just fl- like in the old days, you flushed it with your foot. Yeah. They should just have foot flushers. In the old days, you flushed with your foot? I believe so. I might be making that up. I'm not sure. <laughs> the old days you flush with your foot. I believe so. I think so. No, they didn't have foot no. pedal flushers. <laughs> no, I think you threw sawdust over it and kept it. Moving. I guess it depends on which old days you're talking about. The oldest days. No, the oldest days, they probably didn't have foot flushers, but I think maybe in the I 50s. I got to write this down. I don't think there's a foot flusher. I think there might be. <laughs> foot flusher. So I, I'm just, it's something that irritates me. I, I'd imagine it has to irritate other people. The whole automated soap dispenser, sink dispenser of the water. Then you have to be automated to dry your hands now with these That's Dyson an- things. Yeah. 
everything about going to the bathroom in public, I think, is annoying to me. Everything. Have you ever been in the bathroom and heard somebody fully dumping? <laughs> yes. Yep. Oh, yeah. It's hard to concentrate. <laughs> it's... <laughs> <laughs> It is disgusting. Listen, like, I was like, I had my daughter <laughs> in like a Target bathroom and she had to go and we were potty training her. So she's in there and I'm holding her up. So she's hovering, but it's really just me holding her <laughs> above the toilet and her like talking and stuff while she's doing her business. Does it and splash up and hit you? Somebody, no, somebody comes into the stall next to us. I don't even know what it sounded like. I can't imagine what came out of this old woman's body. It was like Mount St. Helen erupting. Was like, what? My daughter's face was like, what is happening? And you have to share the smell. And I'm trying. I'm waiting for the smell. And I'm trying not to laugh. Because if I get laughing, my daughter's going to laugh. Right. And, you know, we're trying to take a dump in there. And I don't know what that's going to entail a laughing three-year-old dumping next to some old grandmother that's <laughs> <laughs> like blasting her ass It's like out. hell on earth. <laughs> it was awful. Everybody's dumping. It was awful. So she's they going. They should make those things soundproof. She's like <laughs> She's going, right? Yeah. Crazy. I hear her with the toilet paper wipe and now I'm like, oh my god, let me just get my baby's freaking pants up and deal with this. The woman knows we're in there, and I'm, like, making noise and stuff. I'm like, <coughs> like, lady, clamp it up or do something, because this, this, is, this isn't a private performance. This is disgusting. Now my daughter is, like, not going to be able to, to hold in her laughter much longer, and then I hear the lady go, whew, that was a bad one. <laughs> <laughs> with that Nebraska accent and everything, like North that. Dakota. And she was like 115 years old. <laughs> she didn't care. She just Ooh, went in there and let one. it rip. Yeah. She wiped once, kept going. Did she wash her hands? I, I don't know. I couldn't even. I was crying. So your point about the not washing your hands when you pee is you know what you touched? And it wasn't that bad. I don't know if that's my point. I think I was just really trying to justify. It the is fact true. That I mean, I that's probably the cleanest place on your body. In that, it in, doesn't it doesn't get exposed to much air or fungi. I don't know about that or bacteria. <laughs> no, it doesn't. And it's not like you know you have toilet paper in your hand. You're not wiping with your bare hand. Oh, you, wait. <laughs> <laughs> I, I you take did. care of my situation, and then I like. Try to open the door with my elbows and get out of Dodge before I have to listen to some freaking <laughs> on... citizen shit her brains out. <laughs> <laughs> I was listening to the Howard Stern show and they had a commercial for a product called Shittens. I saw that. The <laughs> mitt, the hand mitt. <laughs> That's genius. It's ridiculous. What are you doing? Why would you need a shitten? You, have you ever changed a baby? I don't think it's marketed towards babies. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's marketed towards adults for themselves. <laughs> I don't need a whole mitten. <laughs> Why don't we just use toilet paper? I don't know. Like, think about it. You would have to actually take the shitten, <laughs> shit. put the shitten on, and then wipe your ass with it. And then how do you get the shitten off? I don't know. With your mouth? <laughs> Do you wear two? <laughs> Come on from the front and the back. <laughs> what a ridiculous product. It is ridiculous. I think we got to hit them up on Twitter after this and be like, we talked about your product on the air. <laughs> now talk about us. Oh, shittens. I would try them on my baby. What happened? I'd try them on my baby. A shitten. Yeah. I'd probably wash the whole body with them. <laughs> It's like a, it's like a, a sponge bath but with a shit. In. Yeah, with a shit. In. So on to another topic. Okay. You ever go to a restaurant and let's say, for some reason, I always end up going out to dinner early, like five o'clock because we're old right. people. Right. I'm like 60. So we go out, we get the early bird special at 430. Oh my God. And... There's like, let's say there's a restaurant with 70 tables. Okay. 
and there's three retards eating at 4.30. Okay. They'll put the fourth retard group that comes in right next to the other three. Mm -hmm. We have 70 tables in this restaurant, yeah. and I have to sit on top of this other person so that yeah. we can hear each other's conversations. Right. That doesn't irritate you? It irritates the living shit out of me. Me too. And you know what irritates me more? What? When I go out to dinner and I don't have kids with me, and you sit me next to a family that has children with them. Right. There should be a kid-free zone, even in restaurants. Oh, I agree. But, there should you be, should, but as a host, There should be kid-free states. <laughs> <laughs> I'd move there. I'd move there. Like a dry county. <laughs> right. No kids in the state. There's like there's areas of Jersey that are kid free. Really? Like Cranberry, New Jersey. Like they like they scare the kids away so that they don't have to pay any property taxes. It's all old people that live there. They scare them away. Yeah. <laughs> I guess they see a kid and they take their teeth out. <laughs> or pull their shittins out. Come here. <laughs> Let me give you a bath. <laughs> but I, I don't understand why they have to do that. It's that hard to walk three tables more. You know what to it serve is? me so it's they don't have to sit on top of these other people? I believe that it is because um, each waitress or waiter has a certain number of tables. Okay. So they can't, like, like they delegate them out. Can't we just delegate them every other table? Listen, can't we keep track some other I way? I definitely think that there has to be a, a better way, and it doesn't make any sense to me if you have a restaurant full of people. Or full of tables with not a lot of people. I we have to sit on top of full, each other. But why, yeah. Why do I have to sit, why can't you sit me in the, the opposite corner from these people? You guys track your waiter situation and yeah. let me not sit on top of everybody yeah. else. I don't think that as a, a host or a hostess, they are thoughtful enough. No. Usually about where they place you. I'm going to be quite honest. For a service industry, most waiters and waitresses suck. I, I, I agree. They I suck. agree with you. And I have to pay their wages. Yes. Why do I have to tip you to bring me food? Do you always tip? That's a good question. <clears throat> I would not be opposed to not tipping. Okay. I typically tip. Typically tip 15 to 20%. Mm -hmm. However, I always hate doing it because it's ridiculous. Build the price of the service into the food. Every other industry, I don't go to the doctor and tip the doctor. I don't go to the mechanic and tip the mechanic. You don't tip a mechanic? I don't tip a mechanic. I don't I don't go anywhere and tip people other than when I go out to eat. Why well, don't I have to pay their wages for their crappy job? It's true. And then they get insulted if you don't tip them well. Mm -mm. If you do not. Then they write on Facebook, oh, these people are so cheap. I don't care. Do your job better. Yeah. If you're not making enough money as a shitty waiter, then apparently you should be doing something else. I agree. Like be a gas station attendant. I wouldn't tip them either. No, but they don't. You're not supposed to tip them, are you? But I don't understand why we have to tip waiters. I mean, I tip because I live in America and I'll follow the customs. Mm -hmm. I will tip if if you do your job. But yeah. if you aggravate me or you bring me the wrong food or you're, I, it's it's definitely circumstantial. But if you're you're basically a dick at your job, yep. I do not tip you. It's not that hard of a job. No, it's really not. People that, make it out like it's rocket science. I'm right. relatively sure I could handle getting somebody something that they asked for. <laughs> it's really not that difficult. Yeah. You're not making the food. Now, you want to know something that does annoy me when I go Why out don't you eat? tip the cooks? They made the food. It's true. Why shouldn't I pay their salary? It's true. That is true. I would they're, say they're, they're far more important right. than the person the bringing you the food. Them, right. In fact, get rid of the waiters. Let me make a digital order on my iPhone and then go pick it up at the window. I'm pretty sure that I could handle that and cut the whole waiter out of you the equation. You know what? I bet there's places in the city that you can do Just that. Just give me a ding or hit me up with a text. My food's ready. I'll get my and my wife's food and I'll go sit down. Hit me I don't up need with them. a text. Give me a ding. And give I'll me a ding. And I'll my own food up. <laughs> I don't need a... Oh, the waiter's job is completely useless. I can certainly do the job better myself. You're right. Get a nice water and soda machine. I'll get my own drink and I'll have it right when I want it and not when I have to wait for the waiter to come over and give me a You're, drink. You Right now, you are describing Burger King. But Burger King, you get the service you want. You can get a refill if you need a refill. 
If you need a napkin, you could just go walk up and ask for a napkin. Burger King, you get the service you want. At Burger King, the service is probably better than 90% of restaurants. And I've been to some fancy restaurants, trust me. These guys don't care. They just want tips. Yeah, we went to dinner last night, and I felt like, uh, I think it's a fine line with me. And it also depends on my mood. Like, I might have been a little crotchety last night. I'm pretty sure you? that's not racist. Yeah, I might have been a little a little bit crotchety last night. Crotchety is like, racist? Of what race? I was making a joke. Um, I don't get the joke. Okay. Well, <laughs> <laughs> we went to dinner last night and I might've been a little bit crotchety and I had a couple drinks before we went out and it's on a, it's a nicer restaurant. And, uh, it annoyed me that she asked me so many times if we were okay. Yeah. Get the fuck away from me. If I wasn't okay, I'd raise my hand. I'd let you know. <laughs> you just sit there with your <laughs> hand up? I'd Listen, rather them ask me if I'm okay so I can get a freaking drink refill. No, there were, there were two people in this restaurant. We went pretty late. Yeah. There, it was us and then a, another family. And there was a, a couple people in the, in the other room. But in our section, there were two tables. Mm-hmm. If I wasn't okay, you'd probably know. How? I would raise my hand. <laughs> That's ridiculous. <laughs> I'd make eye contact. I'd do something. Yeah. I'd wait for Tara, whatever the fuck her name was. They should have almost like uh, at the airplane with the airline attendants where there's the little ding, ding button. Yeah. They should have that on the table they, yeah. so they know I need something. Yeah. No. She they just me, uh, Their job can be replaced by robots. I'm sorry. Yeah. And then we wouldn't have to tip. Right. But I wasn't, uh, I didn't, I wasn't the one paying, so I wasn't the in charge of the tippage. Right. And the person paying thinks you should tip everybody for everything oh, no. that they do, no matter how bad it is. Because sometimes I'm like, listen, you are not tipping 20% for that service. If you need to tip, that's fine. You are not tipping 20%. That girl blows at this. You want to hear my best tipping? Mm-hmm. The best tip I ever gave? Negative tip. Yes, you can give a negative tip. <laughs> so what I did is I was at a Hooters, oh, well known for the God. excellent service. <laughs> And it was in Atlantic City, and the service was so horrendous that they gave me the bill, and let's say that the bill was $30. I did negative 10, $20 total, signed my name, walked out. Is that all you got charged on your card? No, I got charged the 30, but I think I made my point. (laughs) (laughs) No, I got charged the 30, yeah. I don't know if anybody's ever pulled that one off before. Did you? I've never even thought of that. Listen, if there's positive numbers, there's negative numbers. <laughs> did you leave him a note and let him know why you did it? Nope. No, let no. him figure it out. I mean, you're not going to be like, wow, this guy was so pleased with the service. I can't believe he left me a negative $10 tip. <laughs> I think they could figure that out on their own. Even out of Hooters. You, listen, I don't put stupidity past anyone. Indeed. What else you got? The Apple Store. The Apple Store. The Apple Store irritates me. First I've, of all, I've because I hate one Apple. In the city, yeah. I mean, yeah, I have an iPad, I have an iPhone, I own Apple stock, but I hate the company. <laughs> <laughs> and I hate Apple computers. Hardcore. And the thing I hate the absolute most is that everybody that works there is a genius. Listen, if you're a genius, you're not working at a retail store in the mall. (laughs) The Apple genius. So I walk in and I need to get an Apple warranty for the phone that I just bought. I bought the iPhone 5S. Oh, nice. And I'm helped by a very wonderful douchebag with a handlebar mustache who's a genius. Oh, right, right. So I have to have a serious conversation about warranties with a guy that has a handlebar mustache. How'd that go? Pretty good. (laughs) (laughs) He was a pretty smart guy. No, but seriously, I feel I can't even take the whole thing seriously when I need to go in and deal with a problem and I have to deal with a genius. Is that what they called them or is that what you're calling them? No, they're Apple geniuses. The people that work there at the Apple genius bar. Oh my God. I didn't know that. So, And let me tell you, the people behind the bar working there are not geniuses and the people on the other side are certainly not geniuses they can't even use a computer half the time there's nobody there is a genius and everybody feels like they're very smart there Mm -hmm. 
I don't like that. The people that work in the Apple store are on the bizarre side. How so? The handlebar mustaches. Oh, yeah. Tight That'll pants. Yeah. Um, They're hipsters then. Hipsters. Definitely yeah. hipsters. But they take themselves very seriously. Of course they do. Every hipster does. You don't have to tip them. <laughs> and what would you tip them? Here's a tip. Get a better mustache. You Here's douche. some mustache wax. <laughs> mustache. Here's a razor. <laughs> Here's a tip. <laughs> No. What else you got? Keep them coming. Keep them coming. Yeah. Musicals. What? I hate musicals. Musicals are ridiculous because instead of just saying whatever the hell they want to say, like, let's say that the message is, I was driving home and a guy tried to run me off the road. Instead. <laughs> and you hit him in the face with a roll of quarters. <laughs> yeah, and I hit him in the face with a roll of quarters. Instead of just saying that, or maybe acting it out, it becomes, I was <laughs> driving <laughs> down the road. He has the voice of an angel. <laughs> a goddamn angel. And a man <laughs> <laughs> drove me off the road. <laughs> so I took a roll <laughs> of quarters. It's just ridiculous. It take, you, <laughs> they take something that could be done in two seconds and drag it out into ten minutes. And I can't deal with it. I have to tell you that <laughs> that was astounding. First of all. Astounding? That was awesome. I didn't expect you to sing for that long <laughs> with that much conviction. I'm convi I have conviction about this because they need to cancel musicals. I, uh, my, my present soon to be ex-husband who is, I can't uh, put the present soon to be. He's my, he's my present husband, but he will be my ex-husband soon. Okay. Um, we're, we're still friendly with each other, but he's a fireman in the city and he's like a, kind of like a gorilla, Sicilian gorilla, like a, I always used to go unga bunga at him because <laughs> he's bunga. like one of those guys, like I. A pretty good guy. I mean, he's a fireman in the city, but when we were first dating, we're complete opposites. Mm -hmm. Like, we don't have very much in common at all, but but we're both funny to each other. That's really where it ends. And uh, when we were first dating, I think he, he was trying to, like, feel me out a little bit and, like, figure out, like, what can I do to, like, entertain this woman? Which is really, like perplexing to everybody <laughs> around me <laughs> so he's like oh we're gonna go into the city i have a surprise for you and i'm like oh my god this is so sweet and romantic this maniac takes me to go see hair that was a good one listen to me wait hair or hairspray hair what's hair wait am i wrong hairspray is the one about the racist times that was good i saw that one so was it hair or hairspray? No, no, I got to Google this right now because I might be an asshole as we speak. Anyway, well, I'm going to find out the name of it. But he took me to this musical where people literally, like, they come out, they come off the stage and they dance on your seats. Oh, that might be hair. That's the one that's like uh, the age of the Aquarius. Yes. I saw that one. You did? Yeah. I they can't. do come out. Somebody I don't touched like that. my head in that one. I, I don't. Mm, I don't like that. And every time they started running down the aisles, I would get like my heart would start palpitating. And I'm like, please, do not fucking touch me. Walk in front of me. Sing to me. At nothing. <laughs> Gyrate your pelvis in my face. Straddling my seat. None of this. Yeah. It was nerve wracking. But that's not the kind of musical that irritates me either. It's more like the Phantom of the Operas because that one's just like rock music. It's okay. Yeah. It was fun. It was fun. It was just, it was stressful. Phantom of the Opera was so horrendous. Did you ever see this play? No. I see a lot of plays. Yeah. And Why? Why do you do that? I don't know. I'm cultured. <laughs> so I was at a Hooters. <laughs> I was at a strip club right after I came from Phantom of the Opera. I'm more cultured than you think. But on a side note. Phantom of the Opera was so horrible. I was sitting there the whole time, like, in pain. 
phys- <laughs> physical pain until about halftime when I looked at my wife and I said, and I was trying to just be like, I was like, did she like this? I, I said, you like this? And she goes, she shakes her head in a no motion. And I'm like, let's get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> like it was that bad. Yeah. I saw Titanic. The play? The play. That was horrifying. Yeah. Uh, somebody that I knew worked on it, so we got like free tickets to go down. Mm-hmm. It, it it was horrifying. Hair wasn't that bad. I took my daughter to see The Wizard of Oz, the musical. We saw Wicked, horrendous. That. It's bad. Horrendous. Really? It's three hours of awfulness, oh. and that would be the best. That would be the best example of my stretching things out for no reason. Really, three, I don't know if I could do three hours, uh, really, of anything. I didn't know how to sit there that long. Yeah, I can't. I can't do it. It was bad. I'm having a hard time sitting here for this long. For one hour. (laughs) In front of the the microphone. (laughs) You're doing a better job tonight. I'm really trying. Like, I think think I'm starting to have a muscle spasm in my back. (laughs) (laughs) Because you haven't moved? Because I can't move. Uh, I feel like I'm in a goddamn neck brace. I'm looking at your waveforms, and they look good. They look strong tonight. Thanks. You have strong waveforms. Thank you. I feel I feel strong. You like when you ask somebody to do something, mm-hmm. I expect that shit to get done. No, 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 not like that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's say you're like, "Hey, do you want to go out to dinner on uh-huh. Friday night?" Right. I hate when people say maybe. Like if they find something better to do, or I'll let you know. Yeah. I don't like those responses. Do you ever you ever find that as an irritation? Yeah, but then I'll like I do feel like that to people. <laughs> okay. Cuz you know why? Cuz sometimes I'm just I just got to stay home. So why don't you just say no? Well, that's rude. No, it's rude to say maybe. It's rude to say I don't I'll know let how you know. I'm going to feel. I don't know how I'm going to feel. So why don't you just say no and wait for a time when you're going to feel chipper? <laughs> chipper. Cuz what if they find somebody else? And then I lose my spot. You're the person I'm complaining about. <laughs> <laughs> if What am I supposed to do? Wait around until Friday at 3 p.m. and you still haven't responded to me to make other plans? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that is exactly what you're supposed to do. <laughs> well, this is a thing we dread here at the Things We Dread show. Or at least I dread. It annoys me when other people do it to me. Yeah, it's irritating. But I do the shit out of it to other people. I don't. I try not to do it. I think like even on Facebook, what is the point of an event having a maybe? Like, what does that do for you? Yeah. So I have fifteen people saying yes to the event, fourteen people saying no, and thirty people saying maybe. How do I prepare for this? Do I buy fifty people's worth of food? Right. I think I just say I'm. I petition to get rid of the maybe on Facebook events. Remember when there used to be an a dislike? No. You don't remember when there used to be the thumbs down for things? You could like it or dislike On it? On Facebook? Yeah. I don't think there was a dislike. Listen to me. If there was a dislike, I would burn the crap out of that button. I know. I think that's probably why they got rid of it. I might have... I may have dreamt this. <laughs> that's <laughs> what your dreams consist of? Listen, you don't know. Last night I dreamt that... Uh, I was I was living in this old house and somebody my daughter was like look at all the look at those things in those trees and it looked like giant Godzilla sized orangutans and they were like jumping from tree to tree like a squirrel would but they were the size of a fucking airplane and I was like holy shit let's everybody get in the house and we hid in the house, and then I listened to these gigantic orangutans rip the house apart upstairs. We were like playing Uno. We had guns. That's what my dreams consist of. <laughs> <laughs> that. I, I've had some weird dreams. Mostly, they, they seem to be ethnic-based. <laughs> <laughs> Sponsored by the KKK. No, I'm serious. I don't know why, but like, I've had some weird ethnic based dreams. I can't control my dreams. 
You know what? That does bring me to something that annoys the shit out of me. I told somebody about this dream. I have to explain the dream now. Uh, Otherwise, gonna, people are going to think I'm a racist. It, but it just, or well, they're going to think I'm more of a racist after I explain the dream. <laughs> but it annoys me when people go, oh, well, that means blah, 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 blah. Your mom didn't hug you enough or whatever. Or those orangutans symbolized whatever. I don't, I don't believe in that. I don't believe that, that your dreams are like hold the secrets to your inner psyche. Right. I think I probably ate a Bible's worth of LSD in my life and it fucked up my mind. And when I go to sleep and I can't control a little bit of what goes on up there, it just goes apeshit. So what's my excuse? You're racist. <laughs> <laughs> Not racist. Here's, here's the deal. And I think one of the dreams that I had, I think I know the explanation as to where it came from. Okay. So first I'll tell you the dream. The dream was that me and my wife, and it usually the dreams usually have me and my wife in them. Do you dream in color? What? Do you dream in color? I have no idea. I do. <laughs> How do you know? Because I know I do. Because I'll be like, I'll notice my red shirt. Or uh, I'll notice know. like... Mine are usually more conceptual than the red shirt. So I had this dream that all night... <laughs> Me and my wife were being chased by Asians. I have no idea why, but we just had to keep running, and we were keep being chased by Asian people. Now, it's I'm not 100% sure where it came from, but it was a very scary dream. And then I was thinking about it, and there was a time where my wife and I went to Niagara Falls. Mm -hmm. And we went out to eat in a Chinese, <laughs> in a Chinese restaurant, and... I went to pay the bill. I asked for the check. They didn't bring the check. I asked for the check again. They didn't bring the check. I'm sitting there for like a half an hour asking for the check. They didn't yeah. bring the check. So I threw like $10 down on the table. It was definitely more than that, the meal. And then me and my wife left the restaurant. And I remember we started running. Like when we got out of the restaurant, we're like, we better get out of here before they find out that we underpaid them. <laughs> So then I remember we were, I think we were joking around that we thought we were being chased by them. And maybe that's where the dream came from. Maybe. That we were being so, not so racist. Just I that mean, we had really... an experience where we thought we were being chased by right. Asians. And can you really be racist against Asians? I mean, doesn't everybody hate them? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> I had another one, which was also ethnically or nationally racially based. Where <laughs> <laughs> let me make up a fucking slew of words <laughs> racially based where my wife was stolen by black men mm -hmm. and sold into porn and I didn't do anything about it nothing nothing because <laughs> I remember telling my wife about the dream and how she got stolen into like I guess interracial porn right interracial <laughs> And she asked, like, what did I do about it? And I remember <laughs> I said I didn't do anything. <laughs> I didn't do anything. Did you watch the porn? I don't think so. I don't watch interracial porn, so no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Poor Sammy. She puts up with a lot. She gets the shit out of the deal here. <laughs> she gets sold into porn. She has to run away from Asians. Oh, my God. It's crazy. It is crazy. So anything else happened to you this week? Anything you have to vent about before uh, the conclusion of episode four? What happened that I have to vent about? Nothing. Nothing. I had a kind of an, an uneventful week mostly which is nice i like when it's like that um i you know what i did i did think about and this happens to me almost daily um i call them the djs of my life hmm. we talked about this a little bit i make the assumption i'm probably correct that you're the dj of someone's life explain where no matter where this person is they pick the music you could be driving your own vehicle they start touching the fucking radio. That would be me. They're touching iPods. They're like, oh, listen to this song. 
And if you ever say, you meaning me, if I ever say, oh, wow, I really like this song, the DJ of my life has to talk through the whole fucking thing and explain to me, oh, I saw these guys back in 94, or I saw this, or I just, oh, they had this other album. I don't care. This song's three minutes long. Are you going to talk for three fucking minutes through the whole <laughs> song that I just said I liked? Yes. DJ of my life. You do that, don't you? I do like to be in control of the radio. Yeah. I think she has an opinion on this. My wife is sitting over there. What, what's the opinion? <laughs> she's <laughs> she's, she's shaking, her, <laughs> shaking her head yes. I don't know. I feel like maybe I'm a control freak. I'm also a remote hog. Yeah. I'm always in charge you know of the what? remote. I think it's kind of the same the same people. <laughs> the remote hogs and DJs of your life. Yeah. And it's annoying. I like to hold the remote. For what? Even when you're not using it? Yeah. That's weird. I don't know. It feels good. You feel powerful. I can change the channel at any Whenever time. Whenever you want to. It's amazing. Mute it, shut it off. It's possible. Go nuts. <clears throat> but yeah, I do like to be in control of the radio, but the thing is, like, we listen to very different kind of music. My wife is writing a note to Bombshell. No, I hope I can read this. She could just talk. Oh, yeah. You sing during the good songs. She's not going to talk. Look at her face. I She's sing not... during the good yeah. songs? I get the I'm a good sing, and the words are wrong. I'm a good oh, singer, though. Oh, my God. No, mine goes, mine goes like this. Uh, that's not even the fucking words. Yeah, there's no banana song. No, it's just noise that comes out. <laughs> and then he'll know like three words at the end of the sentence. <laughs> I rock this town. What? It's kind of fun. I have a really hard time with lyrics for some reason. Yeah. I can't remember them. I don't have that problem. But You know the I, lyrics? When I'm carousing around with someone else who's the DJ in my life, I very rarely get to hear the actual songs that I like. Because the second I go, oh, I like this song. It's it. It's over. He just keeps talking? Yeah, he talks through the whole thing. The that could thing. be a problem. It is a problem. So I got I got a little buck ass last time, and he went to touch the radio, and I was like, <laughs> slapped his hands, and I was like, you're not the DJ of my life. You're not going to keep changing the radio. And he was like, are you serious? Yeah. Everywhere we go, every moment. Did you I make this you, term up, DJ of my life? Yeah, I did. It's a good term. It is. It's, I mean, I'm specifically talking about music choices and like, and it's usually in like a couple situation. One of them is the DJ. I'll be honest. I even, I may control the music, but I also control the temperature in the car, regardless of if I'm driving or not. Yeah. Yeah. It's a man thing. I'll just thing. grab at the temperature and just yep, change it. It's a man thing. Rolling windows down like there's no tomorrow, changing radio stations, making it fucking 68 degrees in there. <laughs> Take your own car. <laughs> Maybe that's why I always drive. <laughs> and you drive. <laughs> always. Maybe it's so that I can't be accused of anything. Yeah. You're the captain of your ship. I drive. I drive and I'll, I'll have like the windows rolled down, the air conditioner on, a fan blowing at me. <laughs> and my wife will be sitting there with a hoodie on over yes. her head, like shaking. Yes. And this makes no difference to me. <laughs> I'm still driving 58 degrees. Anyways, that's it for episode number quattro, four. That was quick. That was a quick hour. We made it to number four. I know. That's pretty surprising. I, I don't know. Can we make it to ten? I bet we can. You think so? Yeah. Are we going to run out of things to talk about by number ten? <laughs> no, I'll repeat shit. <laughs> we'll just keep talking about the same <laughs> thing. keep talking about the same stuff. <laughs> you need to tell people... And that's you in the, the broad universe, term, right. the, universe, the universe, the listeners about this show. We need to get people listening to this and talking on the Facebook page, subscribing on iTunes, thingswedread.com. We got to tell everybody. I think we're going to do a mailing list. I think I'm going to start a mailing list one that's of these days. That's a really good idea. An email list. This way you sign up. As soon as the show is ready, we email you. That's a good idea. And I love, love the Facebook page that we can post pictures of stuff. We can reference. We've been kind of interacting about. throughout the week. I love that. I do. I like with that. people. That's fun. Did I, I put up the picture of me and the guy with the bangs <laughs> at the bar. I'm telling you, he looked like my freaking, uh, 
my gym coach in junior high. It's a, the Facebook.com. Mrs. Memelard. Uh, things we dread page is a good time it is i like it i like doing it i like the interaction and everybody should feel free to complain on there whether it be about us or other things and then maybe we'll talk about it we'll interact we'll have a good time in the two weeks that we're not talking on the air right if you complain about me though paul i'm probably just going to delete it no you can't delete anything i'll delete any any complaint that paul has about me will be immediately deleted i think he's in love with you now (laughs) we still got to get him here Anyways, thingswedread.com, facebook.com slash thingswedread, thingswedread on iTunes. Share it with everybody. We need your help to get our ministry out there. (laughs) I am a reverend, Reverend B-Man. So that's going to be about it for tonight's show. We're going to have another show, episode number five, in two weeks. That'll be on a Wednesday night? I'm not sure yet. All right, let's just, you know what? Let's just... Just do it by the seat of our pants. We'll see how it goes, but we'll, it'll be in two weeks. All right. It'll be myself and Bombshell again. Mm-hmm. So share the word. Let us know what you thought of the show. Go on thingswedread.com, and we will catch you on the flip side.